ways that could involve every member of the family, despite the family size, activities that could be shared by a variety of people, whether they were young or old, male or female, single or married. One such activity is clogging. It was brought professionally to America by Irishmen, but has been part of American culture for perhaps a century. In Kentucky, clogging is still a very important form of entertainment, and during the weekend of July 28th, families from all across Kentucky and surrounding states came together on Hoedown Island at Natural Bridge State Park to share and learn various clogging routines. Tonight, we'll share in some of the events that occurred on that weekend, and you'll be given a beginning lesson in clogging, and finally, you'll see firsthand some of the best cloggers of all times perform. According to Steve Smith, who is a clogging instructor and the coordinator of this particular Friday night's activities, the Appalachian Mountains are viewed as the primary place where clogging was created as we know it today. Clogging originated um, in the Appalachian Mountains. Clogging was a result of taking dances of different immigrants from Scotland, Ireland, Great Britain, uh, the indigenous Indians, and also black Africans who settled in the Appalachian Mountains, and out of that melting pot came a beautiful dance called clogging. Also in the Appalachian area, the banjo and the fiddle were invented, and that foot stomping, hand clapping music um, led the way for, for the dance to follow, and that's what we call clogging these days. I feel some responsibility for carrying on the tradition as we teach new people. One of the things you'll see as you watch the dance tonight is that people do a lot of line dances, precision choreographed routines to popular music, and that's probably, probably been responsible for the upsurge in popularity of clogging. However, uh, clogging arose from traditional music in Appalachian Mountains, and, and I have a preference that people not learn how to clog and not know that and not be able to appreciate that. Clogging is, is one of the fastest growing dances in America. Uh, certainly it started in the Appalachian Mountains in East Tennessee, Kentucky, North Carolina, but now the two states that have the largest clogging population are Florida and Texas. Videos have, have helped to teach people in other states, travel, um, and modern America has, has taken clogging out of the mountains and it's now spread throughout the United States. In fact, the current boom is happening in Canada. So uh, we're spreading out, and I'm not sure where it'll stop. Four kicks. Three on the legs. Right, left. Two on the legs. Stomp triple. Four basic go. One, two, three. Ready, and. Oh, you're looking good. Bang kick, two, three. Looking good, Chuck. A number of dances were learned this clogging weekend, and on Friday, under the guidance of Steve Smith, participants clogged two familiar tunes, some contemporary, others traditional.
weekend been going on and who developed it? Well, Charlie Burns, a longtime clogging instructor and the coordinator for Saturday night's activities, tells us a little about the history. The clogging weekend began in the late 50s, uh, I would think 58 or 59, and has been going on uh, ever since. They dance uh, one night a week on Saturday nights starting in April and go to October through October, then in, from June to, to Labor Day, they add a Friday night to this. It's been going on now for 25 to 30 years. Uh, it just has gotten bigger every year. And Richard Jett is the, is the, is the MC responsible for this. And when he's out of town and there are the people fields in, and this weekend it happened to be my turn. The people that, that'll, that'll be here tonight, they're gonna see a variety of dancing. They'll be dancing for people that can't clog. They'll be dancing for people that can clog. Uh, what's attractive to the overall crowd is, and the people that's familiar with Natural Bridge, they know that when they do show up here at Natural Bridge for a weekend of clogging, that we're gonna be performing our, our teaching. We do some teaching, a dance that they can perform, whether they clog or they don't clog, whether they're young or whether they're old. It's not really a factor.
children to stand each other there. On this particular Saturday evening, not only was there lots of dancing for everyone, but various groups took part in an exhibition, each showing off their team's style and dress. According to Bobby Hill, a clogging instructor and the organizer of the exhibition team known as Bobby's Rockers, there are important steps involved in coordinating and obtaining a dedicated and successful team. You coordinate a clogging team by hopefully choosing your, your, some of your best students. Uh, these students are ones that have to have a desire to be on a team because there is a very, very strong commitment that have to be made by these individuals. I have uh, organized a small team. Uh, they range from 9 to 12 years old. There are six of them on the team. And we've been together now for about a year as a team. Uh, and like I say, it takes a very, very strong commitment for these, these young folks. As an instructor, uh, one, of the, one of the key ways to keep the kids involved in this type of thing is exposure. And, and what I mean by exposure is like here this weekend, uh, the kids are going to do an exhibition tonight, and, and this kind of gives them a charge, okay? They've worked real hard to do what they do and to learn what they learn and to get out and perform in front of other people is just a it's just a, a high that you can't believe we prepare for a weekend like this uh, we start about two to three months beforehand because we want it to be right when we do an exhibition we want it to be as perfect as we can but we also want to have fun doing it in other words if, if if the kids do make a mistake, we don't penalize them or we don't get mad at them, okay? We love them just like we've always did, but they work real hard to do what they do, and uh, uh, they'll do a good job tonight, too. Moving, making
up in the morning, nothing was a going right. Spent the whole night fussing and a fighting with your wife. Bills out in the mailbox, you know that you can't pay. Then you try to leave for work and your car's been hauled away. What you needed was a real good, feel good song. One that makes you feel alright when everything goes wrong. One that makes you move your feet and makes you sing along. You need a real good, feel good song. A friend of mine was working hard, saving all his pay. Like Jesse James, I already sold most of it away. Then he got chased by a street gang and he finally found a phone. He called up the police and they put him on hold. But it was a real good, feel good song. One man makes you feel alright when everything goes wrong. One man makes you move your feet and makes you sing along. You need a real good, feel good song. I remember when I was back in school The teachers always wanted me to learn the rules But I was studying girls on Friday night I said if I can learn this, everything's gonna be alright It's the first time love, I was too young The second time I was just holding on The third time I was I got burned It's happened to be another learn I grew up and I thought that things would change. I get more mature, but I guess you say the same. But I still believe in the starry night. And I keep on waiting for the one that I burn out right. It's the first time I was too young. The second time I was just holding on. The third time I was I got burned. The third time I was never learned. But my heart won't let you go Maybe I'm just too soon If I cannot take it giving in Your window wins again That's all I find the thing They got a room to be there And get my mind to remix it A star to be there
Finally, one group in this exhibition found a most unusual way to perform and entertain the audience. Let's take a look at the Hoosier Hodanners from Sunman, Indiana. Okay, little children, turn around. Everybody turn around. We gotta go this way. Granny, shut up and get up here. I'm I'm just getting disgusted. Up here, Granny. Jethro, put her back up here. She don't know where she's at again. Okay, Charlie. My family's ready. Are you? You just thought you danced too hard. For the last few minutes, you have had the chance to sit back and watch numerous experienced cloggers perform. Well, now the time has come for your personal clogging lesson at home. With Steve Smith and Charlie Burns as your instructors, your lessons are ready to begin. I'm Steve Smith from Lexington, Kentucky, and I'm also a clogging instructor. And if you were my new beginning student, we'd start classes like this. First of all, I don't assume that you know how to do anything but walk with these two appendages at the bottom of your legs. What I do is turn my back to you and ask you to follow me. The first thing I'd like for you to do is just to walk, but to let your knees bend each time your foot hits the ground, like this. We probably walk in a circle with you following. And all you have to do is let your muscles relax enough so that when your foot hits, your knee bends. So far, so good. Next, what I do is ask you to do what we call a rock step. I begin to turn my back, have you put your feet together, bring this right foot back so that the ball of the foot's across from the heel, and we'll push up on the rock and down on the step. We'd rock and we'd step, we'd rock and step, and then we'd switch. Pull the left foot back, ball across from heel, and push up on the rock and down on the step. Up rock and down step. That'd be lesson one. That probably probably would take an hour if you were in my class. The second session, we'd start by integrating the step and the rock step, and that would look like this. We go step, rock, step, switch feet, step, rock, step, switch feet, step, rock, step, switch feet, step, rock, step, switch feet. That's the building block the building blocks for a good basic clogging step. Now my colleague Charlie Burns is going to show you how to double toe and combine that with the basic step. Adding to what Steve has already showed you, uh, the in clogging we do a double toe. We, do, we make two sounds on one be the music. And following those two sounds we do a step. So we call it a double toe step. Steve was demonstrating was upbeat and downbeat. One sound on each beat. This one takes two sounds on one beat. And if you were my student and I was showing you, this is how it would start you. This would probably take about about a half an hour to show you this part. We start out by by putting the weight on the left foot, bending the knee, bending both knees. Touch your right toe to the floor, just a touch. You drag it back under your body and you transfer all the body weight to the right foot. At the same time, you pick your left foot up, bend the knees. You touch your left toe, you drag it back on the body, transferring the body weight to the left. So it will go touch, step, a touch, and a step with a backward motion going back under your body. Touch, step, touch, step, touch, step, touch, step. And we start get, picking up a little speed with this. Touch, step, touch, step, touch, step, 
until it's stale. Now from that I go to the, before I talk, or we do the double toe, we'll go back to the rock step that Steve was showing you. So the second part of the lesson would be touch, step, rock, step. Touch, step, rock, step. Touch, step, rock, step. Touch, step, rock, step. Now, the touch requires no body weight. But from that touch, it's the first half of your double toe. Now, from that one sound, we're going to pick up the second sound. By, by doing that, we're going to give our knees a little snap, letting our ankle hinge. Now, if you relax and you don't tighten up, and you bend at the knee, the hip, and let the ankle relax. And from the touch step, you will start picking up the double toe. It will go to this. Touch, step. Now I'm going to give my knees a little bit of a snap, let my ankle hinge a little bit, and it's going to sound like this. I'm going to start picking up two sounds. Double step, double step. And I'm doing this motion, it's coming back under my body. That way I can fly faster, and I won't get as tired. It's, you don't pause between the double toe and the step there's no pause it's one fluid motion then we add to what Steve has showed you and it goes step rock step double step rock step and you're doing the basic clog step What did you think of the program you just saw? KET would like your comments on our productions, and we've installed a 24-hour toll-free reaction line because we want to hear from you. We invite you to call anytime, 1-800-223-6383, and tell us what you think about programs produced by KET.